Well, good morning. Got a new cup of coffee today. And it's not gross for once, so that's always good. That's good stuff right there. I really don't. Can you see my underwear line? Can I see your underwear line? Yeah. What kind of underwear are you wearing? Yeah. No? Like if you were wearing a shoestring, I couldn't see that. No, I did not. I did not look at the underwear you were wearing. Oh, you're wearing your matching set. You know what kind of underwear I'm wearing. Oh, yeah, you're wearing your, like, slewed around set. Gotcha. There's a whole war going on down here that we just don't even know about. There he goes. I'm gonna give up. Every morning when we wake up, there's a new mess in the living room. Because of the cats. <laughs> How did you get ketchup on your shirt? <laughs> oh, going to school? You gonna go to school? Oh, got homework? Did you get your homework done? It's always gonna make fun of you. You won't make fun of yourself. Don't get bullied. <laughs> there you Cute, it's her first day at school. Yeah. <laughs> Look at ya. Got your homework done. Who's your favorite science teacher? Mr. Smith. Wow. Don't let those big kids at your job pick on you. Don't do it, okay? Short now, yeah, Well, yeah, I wasn't going to say anything about how short you are, but now I will. Rude. Okay, bye. Have fun. Bye. Oh my god, this is the longest leaving of the house ever. Bye. 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 Okay. So she's going to work. It's currently very early in the morning. Uh, we got up at quarter to five. It's now 5.30 and we got a lot of work to do. Kids don't have to get up for another hour and a half. So what we're going to try to do is get some content for the gaming channel to keep that channel going. Other than that, we got a lot of stuff to do. Um, she doesn't know. So yesterday... I went out and I got uh, some, pulled up some cash because uh, we share cards, right? But she needed a laptop bag, obviously, because she's wearing a school backpack <laughs> to go to work because her work supplies a, a laptop that she's got to bring home. So today's goal is to go get her a laptop bag to celebrate her getting her new job because this new job is a big step forward for her as well as for our family. The hours are amazing, the pay is amazing, and the, she gets to work from home more often than she gets to go to work. So this is all pluses. So we're gonna go get the work done downstairs, try to get the, try to get a gameplay for the YouTube channel over on the gaming side of it. Then we gotta wake up the kids, and then we gotta go uh, find a laptop bag. Let's get right into it. with you guys it's taken 30 minutes and i haven't even been able to launch into the game so we make a lot of call of duty content and i was hoping to get some call of duty games in and maybe get the footage that i need to make a video for tonight for the call of duty channel nice and early it is now almost six o'clock i got another hour to go before the kids have to get up and i have not even been able to launch into this game yet activision what the heck's going on man we're gonna keep trying keep trying to persevere but we already got a crash notice and it hasn't even been on for two seconds so we'll see what happens with that <laughs> It. We actually did get a bunch of good gameplays today for the gaming channel. We got a 28 and 12, 41 and 9, and 22 and 9. And by the way, that 41 and 9, there's only 100 kills in the lobby, which means that I got 41 of the 100 kills needed to win the game, which is pretty good. I like to try to get some good gameplays, but the trick with Call of Duty, if you're not a gamer, 
and you decide to pick up Call of Duty, is you need to stop as soon as it starts getting bad. Example of this would be, this was the first game, this was the second game, this was the third game, and then we got into 16 and seven, then we got nine and nine, and then we got into 12 and 12, and then the team wouldn't leave spawn. The second that it starts getting bad, just get off, call it a day, and move on with your life. Go, go play solitaire. Well, that's a uh, gaming channel work done today, minus making the videos. So now we gotta go wake up the kids because it's uh, time to get ready for school. Hey, it's time to get up. It's school time. Good morning. You don't have school, do ya? No, no you don't. Oh no you don't. Oh, oh. Hey Arya, it's time to get up for school. Only one more to go. The third one, the youngest one, the one that takes forever to get out of bed. So, oh my God, she's out of bed. I can't show you because she's getting dressed. I was just saying that you're the hardest one to get out of bed because you take seven years. I'm gonna get this kitchen cleaned up while they're getting dressed and then we can just make some RC girl, but it won't look like we're animals in our house because right now it's looking pretty rough. See, we took the time to put the cleaning supplies on the counter, but not the time to actually clean the counter. So let's get that done. I live a life though and sometimes I just want to document what it takes to be a stay-at-home dad. You have to do the cleaning, the cooking, the getting the ready, every single thing you have to do and then nothing happens in between and that's the time you got to fill. Then they come home, you got soccer, you got dance, you got homework, you got reading, you got video games, you got board games. You're busy then for another five hours and then it's back to nothing. And that's what we're trying to fill here on this channel is the nothingness. And that's what we're doing. So I got more of the morning routine we gotta get done here. We gotta eat cereal, then we brush hair, we gotta do the hair if the girls want their hair done. And then it's uh, off to school. It's pretty cold today, so I'm gonna drive them. And then we're gonna head into town to find that laptop bag. Something I never think about until I one day think about it, mostly because I either see a TikTok or somebody mentions it, is toothbrushes. You just kind of use them and keep putting them in your mouth and they just get dirtier over time. Because everything that these things do is they just pull off all the gross stuff. But then you think about it, you should probably replace these a lot more often than I think all of us do. Let's be real. You don't replace it any faster than I do. So uh, we did a full toothbrush replacement. All brand new ones. Out with these ones, in with those ones. Perfect. So fun fact about me is I used to live actually in Kelowna, BC. I told you guys last episode we uprooted our lives. There it was really hot and I hated it because I'm a fat ginger who can't be out in the sun. Then we move to Alberta and it is freaking cold right now and I'm loving it. Though I have to warm up the truck for the kids because uh, they just uh, will complain the whole time if they have to walk to school in this negative seven weather. For any of you Americans out there, negative seven is uh, not that cold. Ooh, she's cold. All right, all right, you hang this one on the tree. <gasps> Timber, hang this one on the tree. Oh, you suck. And Emily, hang the, I don't know, there's like 20 million in here. <laughs> Hurry up, get it done. so much but I guess yummy. it all works out it's yummy. It's, yummy. it's yummy so we we, we we put them on the tree just to go in your mouth yeah. and then your mouth yeah. and then you just poop it out yeah. <laughs>
Now the kids' school is not actually that far away. It's actually just down the road. But if I'm gonna go to town anyway, I don't mind giving them a ride. It's literally two blocks away, and it's a bit cold today. I won't lie, but uh, I remember being a kid and walking to school is the worst. I used to have to walk so far. All right, well, go get your lunch. Uh, we made it six feet, and then we had to stop because uh, Torky McGee there couldn't uh, <laughs> couldn't remember his lunch. So, <laughs> but as I was saying, the, it's only two blocks away. But I remember like I was always so sad when I had to walk to school. If it's cold, it's not a fun thing to walk to school as a kid. And then if it's hot, it's not fun to walk. So whenever we can, we give them a ride. But we deliberately put the kids in the school that's close to home so they could have a little bit more freedom. Coming from Kelowna with all the, the druggies there and the, the crackheads and the homeless no, population. Crackers. I know you call them crackers, but uh, <laughs> this is, that means something different. It just wasn't safe. We went to a parent-teacher interview once and there was literally a dirty needle on the ground and they're like, oh, they're gonna be doing a needle sweep soon. And I was like, what? And they're like, oh yeah, we always do a needle sweep before every every recess and every lunch. And I was like, and we are done. We are out of here. It just, it wasn't a very good school for the kids. They didn't enjoy it there either. And now that we, we moved here, they have a fantastic school and it's actually, As I was saying, back when we lived in Kelowna, we had a lot of homeless shelters around our house. In fact, we had two wet shelters and one dry shelter within a block of our house. And what was happening is our kids couldn't go outside and play in the backyard because well, the homeless people would bug them back there, not maliciously for the most part. A couple of them obviously were a bit over the top, but they would, uh, they would also come walking through the yard, they'd leave their garbage in our yard, and then they started breaking into the house regularly because the wet shelter stopped, I don't know, they would close down, they needed their money, whatever. And there was this time where my brother went out to warm up his truck before leaving for work, and uh, yeah, somebody broke into it. Like, he literally walked inside to grab his to-go cup, walked outside, and somebody walked in and grabbed his tool bag, like his big duffel bag full of tools. Now this is the story that's the craziest part. This person hopped on their bike and rode like two blocks away. They then traded the bag of tools for a carton of cigarettes. The people who traded the carton of cigarettes for the bag of tools traded it to another group of people, these two girls, for whatever they got out of it. And me and my brother, well my brother first, hunted down the, the guy that stole the, the first guy who stole the parts, right? And then I was like, yo, my brother's gonna kill this guy. So I, I left and I found them like three, four blocks over and my brother's, of course, in this guy's face. He's yelling at him. The guy doesn't have the tools anymore. He's telling us he traded him for a carton of cigarettes. And he has a brand new carton of cigarettes with him, right? So I sit him down on the bench, the homeless man, and I, I call the police. That's my role. I'm stopping my brother from getting charges for being stupid. And I'm stopping the homeless man from, you know, running away. He stole shit. He got caught. The only reason my brother knew that he did it was because he used the duffel bag that my brother stored his tools in as his new backpack to hold his his carton of cigarettes. That's all that was in it, right? So that's how my brother knew. It even had like his name and everything on it. So we end up calling the cops. The cop shows up and he gets out of the car and he goes, oh, and I won't say the homeless man's name. He goes, oh, we'll call him homeless man Jim. Homeless man Bob. Oh, homeless man Bob, I was gonna come find you today. Your charges were dropped, so you don't have to return for whatever the heck, and he goes on all this legal round. He's like, but it looks like you picked up a new charge for robbery and theft and all this stuff, right? So then he starts talking to us, and he explains to us that the, the homeless man used to be the heir to one of the wineries in Kelowna. If you don't know anything about Kelowna, Kelowna has a lot of wineries where they're known for making wine. And he used to be an, like an heir to one of those wineries. He was, he was a millionaire. His dad passed away, left him the millions. He started partying and you know, one thing led to another. He went from harder drug to harder drug. It started with like just normal weed and then he's, the cops like, his story is actually quite sad, which uh, I could care less. Uh, it's life choices, man. You, you make life choices. You made the choice to smoke the weed. You made the choice to do the coke the first time. You made the choice to do the heroin. You made choices, right? And as a person who's actually been to rehab for alcohol addiction, it's a choice. For That's my belief on it, you may disagree. So needless to say, the homeless man gets put in the car and we start talking to the cop. And we, I tell the cop like I'm, a, I'm retired, I got really severely hurt, yada, yada, yada. My brother starts telling him like I got a baby on the way. This is all relevant to the story by the way. 
and I got a baby on the way and so we're just talking back and forth and I get home, my brother goes out, right? He's still trying to hunt down his tools. I'm sitting down in the office, I'm doing some work on a uh, graphic design for a company out in Vancouver. And uh, there's a knock on the door and I wasn't expecting anything. So I go, I open the door and outside is this lady, this young girl, maybe, maybe 20. She's covered in scabs and she's crying, right? And I was like, what the, what, what the hell is going on here, right? And she goes, I'm sorry. And I was like, for what? And then she pulls out this garbage bag and she hands it to me and it's filled with my brother's tools, right? And she goes, my other friend's on the way right now with the other stuff that we pawned. And she's like, we went right back and we, we bought it back. She had just become homeless and was now like, that was her first ever buying of like, she was very young, you could tell. Like the, she hadn't been on the streets long, but whatever she was putting in her body was destroying her. Right? And she was just sobbing. And she's like, when you were talking to the police, I was on the other side of the fence. So where we caught the guy is a church. And there's a like a walled off area that you can't access. They had hopped over that and they were listening on the other side of the fence. And they felt so bad because of my story and then because my brother had a baby on the way and they were screwing up his livelihood that these two girls brought back all the tools except for one because the pawn shop had already sold it. So I made her I made her a deal. I said, if you can get your friends to leave this house alone, I will make sure that I leave consistently bottles outside. And I'd go over to like our, our neighbor's house and I would go to our family's houses in Kelowna and I'd just take their bike, bike bags of bottles and I'd just put them outside my house. And every night those bottles would be gone. I don't know if it was her that took them. I like to assume it was because I never saw her again. But it's like, as much as the homeless population has good people in Kelowna, for the most part, it was not a good experience for me who's not battling addiction and me who's not homeless. I know that sounds very first world problem-ish, but what I was trying to get at is the reason why we moved. One of the reasons we moved was because we went to a parent-teacher interview and we saw a needle on the ground and then they were like, they waved it off like it was no big deal. Oh, before every recess, we do a needle sweep and before every lunch break, we do a needle sweep and then we make sure the kids stay at least 20 meters away from every single fence just in case one of them throws a needle over. And I, that was the day I looked at my wife, Crystal, and I said, we're done. I was like, this is not it for us. We are not, we're not living here. I'm not raising my kids where they have to fear getting stabbed by a needle. They could be outside at the age they were, innocently playing in kindergarten, get poked by a needle, and their lives are ruined for the rest of their lives. So we uprooted our lives to help me with my depression, to save my kids from the drugs and all that stuff. Because I knew if I raised them there that one of them would become an addict. There's, it, it's so prevalent in Kelowna. You can look it up yourself that being there would have resulted in a less quality of life for me, my wife, and my kids, and I didn't want that. So we moved to Alberta, we found a small town, we even went and we interviewed with the cops and we said, hey, like, where should we stay away from? Where's there a high drug rate? Like, wh where should we go? And they recommended the little, very small town that I live in. And I'm so happy we made that choice. I've made so many great friends and moving here has changed my life. My kids are so happy and I know that they wouldn't be happy. When we first moved here, we stayed with my parents while I was looking to buy a house and their downstairs tenant burnt the house down. He did a bunch of mushrooms, ironically. We tried to get her away from drugs and this guy does some. And he lights the house on fire, the house burns down. And one of the cops that showed up, the house I live in now, the, it was one of the first cops that showed up in my house to help save my family. And then he found out that we needed a house and he sold us the house in 30 days so we could get in. And he went and stayed in a hotel because he was just like, you're looking for, I'll sell you a house. And it worked out for everybody. But it, what was cool was being in a small town, because I saw house fires the very first day we moved back to Kelowna where there was a house fire and nobody cared. People just walked by, took videos and left, right? Here, we had people bringing us blankets, people took our animals in, people helped us raise our kids because it was during COVID time. They helped us with schooling. We, the neighbor across the road cooked us meals for two months while we were looking for a house and then purchasing the house. Every day, her whole family took care of us. And you would not get that in a bigger town. And you sure as hell wouldn't get that in Kelowna. Because no matter how much you pleaded with people for help in Kelowna, like to deal with things, they just don't. In BC, it's easier for them to sweep it under the rug and ignore it than anything else. And I'm so happy we made this choice. I'm, it's amazing. And now my wife's found a job that's gonna be way better for her and for her family. And 
it's just gonna be it's gonna be great everything is looking really good right now and i like where it's at and that's why we're doing this my neighbor challenged me and we are, i'll introduce to you him to you guys when we do our first podcast together but after that then you'll see him all the time he, he, he's my neighbor across the road he does a youtube channel as well and uh i uh i help him with like the odd thing here or there and then uh, one day he, i was talking to him like i've made gaming channels and i've tried to make characters based off of gaming characters that would people would in, be intrigued with and i was like i really want to do a podcast where i get to be me no co-host i just sit down with my friends and have a conversation and i was like and i'd really like to get into vlogging so i can sh- share my life with people it's not an interesting one but it's mine and i think the kids would like to look back on this in a few years it's not going to be a family vlog channel where we do all that stupid stuff but like they can look back and be like oh yeah i remember that moment i remember doing that thing and uh, he said i challenge you to do it then I challenge you, like you challenged me to make my videos. He's like, I challenge you to do it. He's like, I wanna see your channel tomorrow, good and ready to go, which was yesterday. And he's like, I'll be your first subscriber. And he did it and you'll meet him on Saturday. Um, But I think I'm gonna have a lot more fun doing what we're doing right here than anything else. Cause then it gives me an excuse to move around and do things. So let's get to where we're going and then (laughs) finally buy this bag. But. We got the topic I wanted to talk about in this video out of the way. You know what sucks? Waking up at four in the morning. Uh, Cause now it's 8.30. I've been up for four and a half hours. Right, four and a half. <laughs> That's a joke I get. Okay. Anyway, so four and a half hours, and I get all the way here. And the reason why I chose to drive all the way to where I am is because there's a Walmart and then there's a Goodwill. And I was hoping to stop into Goodwill and see if I could find a better quality bag than Walmart, which sells junk uh, at cheaper rates. And if I were to do that, I would have to wait here for another well hour and a half and they might not even have any laptop bags. So we're just gonna go into Walmart. I hate Walmart, man. Walmart treats you like a criminal before you walk into the door. You walk into the door, there's cattle cattle guards right there. Then that opens and they close immediately and you're not allowed to leave through that side of the store. Then you walk around and there's cameras everywhere and there's employees like staring at you the whole time, right? And then if you wanna go to like the makeup section, you gotta buy it separately there because you're not allowed to leave the makeup area without paying for everything. And then same with electronics. And then you get to the tills and it's self checkout, but then they have a person, they hired a person to watch you scan your items, but fired the teller that used to do that for you. So now you stand there while somebody stands beside you to make sure you scan your items. Then they have the nerve to try to check your receipt at the door after they, because then when you leave self checkout, there's, there's a scanner. Right, you gotta walk through the scanners, then you turn, you walk through the scanners, and then they have a receipt checker at the door, and then there's more scanners. I just, as soon as I pay for my shit, man, that lady, that lady and her dude can fuck right off, and I'm out the fucking gates. I can, if that scanner beeps, I know I pay for my shit, come after me, man. I just keep walking. Oh, but he, they're just doing their job. I understand that, but if people listen to the corporation, like Walmart, the scummiest corporation ever, then, uh, you're just letting them control you. There's no point. And it's not in a conspiracy theory way. It's you walk into Walmart and it's it, you feel like a criminal the entire time you're in there, even if you're not. And if I know I paid for my shit, I don't need to worry about anything. The real kicker though was one day the lady came over and she's like, I'm gonna scan your items today for you. And then they, they scanned my dog food, but didn't scan it properly. So it never rang through. Free dog food, I guess. Oh, okay, we got choices here. Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of parked like a jackass. <laughs> okay, the bag has been secured. Check this out. So, we didn't go with the cheap one. We actually bought the most expensive one they had. It's pretty cool. I know nothing about laptop bags, but let's review it. Zipper zips flawlessly. You can store a whole lot of stuff in there probably. Good review so far. Texture on the outside feels like every other backpack I've ever touched in my life. Okay. 
Then we come over here, we unzip the big part. Ooh, ah, inside is pens. I bought her some nice new pens to go with it. Then we got ourselves a mount so you guys aren't sitting and I don't have to sit like this to talk to you guys. Oh, and a gift bag. So let's review this. We got the, um, I don't, I don't know what that is. We got the X tend uh, able car windshield and dash mount support poor pair box feels as cheap as every other box I've ever touched uh, so we're not even going to take our time opening it just rip it open just get in there that's what I always say oh fuck yeah pulling it out the box is cheap it goes over there plastic I've had to drink out of paper straws for over a year and a half yet they can put plastic into everything else stupid ass Canada we got this little mount thing with uh, some 3m tape on the back which uh, we're gonna mount you guys like probably I don't know can we get rid of the, the koala we could I don't think that's gonna really make a difference though we'll figure out where we're gonna mount you guys here in a minute might just do it on the dash right there Did that work oh yeah that'd be a good angle okay we know where we're gonna mount you guys oh it can actually just go on the windshield too I think you're supposed to get it wet, so just let me awkwardly lick this in front. Uh, there we go. And then I think it just goes onto the windshield. It definitely is not what it does. <laughs> oh, maybe this thing turns. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Ah, uh, yes. See, this little thing goes down, and it sucks the sucker thing in, and it, goes, and it sucks all the air out. So, let's try this again. And then push, push. Oh yeah, there we go. I got this stupid thing in the way. What guy with the truck doesn't have this stupid thing in the way? Oh, this came right off, so I've already broke it. Worth every penny. We need to turn it. You guys are watching real time. We do the setup for car vlogs. Yes. It works. Yeah. yeah, it works. <laughs> I will not lie to you guys. That took me a very long time to do. <laughs> I didn't take my phone out of its case. I had to do all these extra steps just to get it in there. <laughs> you know what? I already like it though. The angle looks way better. Let's get home. We're gonna get ourselves a coffee from Tim Hortons. Used to be Canadian, but it's not Canadian anymore, and I don't care what you say. It is a, a shell of what it used to be. There's no powdered donuts, like, come on. Good morning. Good morning. Can I get an extra large double double with an espresso? Double double with an espresso? Yeah, extra large, please. Sure. And that is it. That's all? That is all. Thank you. Secured the coffee, secured the bag. We've got a productive morning going so far. I gotta be honest with you. I bought a 2024 Jeep this year, uh, about three months ago. And it pretty much became our daily driver right then. And then like three days ago, I was like, we need to start driving the truck more or she's gonna pass away in the night. <laughs> I'm gonna be a thousand percent honest with you. Switching from a brand new 2024 Jeep, fresh off the trailer, to a 2011 already had 100,000 kilometers on it when I bought it, uh, truck from F-150. Oh, it is like driving a freaking tank down the road. It, and that's saying something, like the brakes feel spongier, the response time's worse, the power steering feels somehow worse than in the Jeep. Right? Everything just feels somehow more clunky. Maybe it's because the new Jeeps are like giant spaceships, but uh, I gotta be honest with you, <laughs> it's it's a bit bit weird. We're gonna do a coffee taste here in a minute once we're on the uh, straight stretch. I love me some coffee, and I was thinking yesterday after making coffee with Adam, that maybe we do make that a once a week thing, except for instead of, we can talk and hang out obviously, but we also go ahead and uh, do a little coffee review at the same time. I just can't get the camera angle right. We we do a coffee, so we 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 can talk and hang out like we did before, but we also can sit there and do a coffee review. So I was looking, and there's a lot of like different kinds of coffee out there. 
See, I'm poor, so I only drink like whatever is the cheapest one. Once in a while, something is like, oh, that's pretty good because it was on sale. But for the most part, I just drink whatever's right, readily available. Um, it's just the way it is. So once we get it going here, because Tim Hortons, man, it's a sure big hit or miss. Shit's flying around in this truck. Like I said, the braking is just not um, not up to form with the Jeep. You know what, we're at a red light. Let's get the first sip of this coffee. The thing with Tim Hortons coffee, right? It's either good or it's bad. But the one guarantee that you get from Tim Hortons is you will shit your pants within 20 minutes of taking your first sip. I don't know what it is about coffee and cigarettes, but Tim Hortons coffee, amplifies that by 10. I used to be a smoker and uh, once I stopped smoking, we, uh, I kind of just stopped going to Tim Hortons. It was like a tradition. You get in the car in the morning, grab a cigarette, drive over to Tim Hortons, get a coffee. And by the time I got to work, take a good old juicy dump. Um, but now I don't uh, smoke. I haven't smoked in two years other than the odd cigar here or there. But uh, I don't really go to Tim Hortons. I stopped going there because I didn't like pooping, but it's the closest one. So let's do a coffee taste. Mm, how do I feel about that? It was very sweet at the beginning, very bitter in the middle, and then right back to sweet. Um, so I really don't think they stirred it. I think that's what that means. Um, because that, that was like pure sugar. A double-double for you non-Canadian folks is a... Um, Two sugar, two cream, or two milk, or whatever you ask for. Double double if you just ask for standards. It's two sugars, two cream, and uh, I get the espresso just to make it fucking delicious. Plus, I've been up since four in the morning, and I'm a bit tired. But it's time to head home. Time lapse commence. Welcome to Car Thoughts with Adam. I was just thinking because I was sitting here by myself that I bet the world would have a lot less problems if people weren't bored. Um, because it seems like whenever people get bored, that's when they get involved in other people's lives and they start thinking about problems that ex don't exist and they start getting all pissy about what the neighbor has next to them rather than just focusing on themselves. If people kept themselves busy, I bet you that uh, the world would have a lot less problems. If we stopped poking each other, our noses in each other's stuff and just made stuff for our own noses to go into, whether that's a hobby, exercise, video gaming, working on cars, going for a hike, or maybe you just focus all your attention on your dogs. I don't know, but as long as we did more of that, I think we'd have a hell of a lot less issues with everything else. I find when I'm bored, I tend to be more agitated and more hyper alert to what's going on around me and more aggressively angry about things than when I'm physically active or I'm really involved in something that I'm doing. If I can get hyper fixated on a project, oh, I'm the easiest guy to get along with. If I am just simply not bored. That was Car Thoughts with Adam. So we're home, we secured the bag, we secured the other bag, and uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of editing done and then you'll probably just see Crystal's reaction when we give her the thing. It won't be that great, I probably assume. Imagine she just falls on the ground. Oh my God. Uh, no, she'll be like, thanks. No, bye. <laughs> All right, let's get inside, get some editing done and I'll catch you guys when she's uh, ready to react. We might still do a workout. I don't know where we're at yet. So that might be part of this too. Well, what you guys just witnessed was uh, me editing a full Call of Duty video. Um, it takes me a while. It's now 11.09. We've gotten so much done today. I'm actually gonna go upstairs now and edit the footage that we have for today's vlog and, <laughs> and go from there. We are cooking with peanut oil right now. 
Oh my God, man. We have got, literally, we woke up at four. We got like eight Call of Duty gameplays before I had to wake up the kids. We got the kids ready. We got the candy canes on the Christmas tree. We cleaned the kitchen. We already went all the way 40 minutes away to buy a laptop bag for my wife to the surprise her. Got home, edited one of the COD videos, and now we're gonna go get ahead on the editing on this vlog. We are killing it today. Oh my God. Sometimes things just go, man, and it feels good. This whole like doing this vlog thing, it's gonna, I think it's gonna work because I'm so motivated because I have to make content for you guys and it's gonna help speed up content everywhere else. Will we be getting up at four in the morning anymore? <laughs> no, I had to take a poop, so we had to get up. And then by that time I was like, oh, I'm already up. I might as well go start doing things. <laughs> anyway, look, it's almost done rendering. We are killing it today. Let's get into the editing, which you won't see. And I'll see you when I see you. Well, in typical dad fashion, I fell asleep on the couch and now there's kids home doing their after school reading. <laughs> Crystal should be home soon. We did it. Okay, you gotta go upstairs because this vlog is already long enough so we don't have like 17 hours. No, that was probably the kids. Wanna know what it is? Oh, there's a whole ass cat in there. <laughs> That's why it's knocked over. I can't fix the lighting in here, so this is gonna be weird. Maybe if I stand in the other way. Yeah, then now you don't have to act like a child going to school. Yeah, that's it. The strap the cat probably took out of the bag. Well, there you go. Like I said, she'd just be like, Ooh, you got me a laptop bag. I told you. After 500 years of being married, I figured it out. Anyway, see you guys in tomorrow's vlog. Like, comment, subscribe.